like so much land these days is used for development. Like if there's any available space, it seems like our first priority is to figure out how can we make money off of that? How can we develop it, build on it, whatever it might be. Um, and so to see land like that right outside of a, of a school be set aside for the environment, for the natural world, um, that to me is, is really meaningful. Where somebody might drive by and just see a field full of weeds, I want them to see the animals and the birds and the things that are using that field and those marshes and those ponds. Um, it's a special place that uh, I want to help connect the community. Okay, so if you were explaining what the land lab was to someone who didn't know what it was, how would you explain it? Like, what is the land lab? I describe it as a great place to learn, a great place to have for a school, a great place to just interact with a lot of things that you don't get at regular schools. Something to let you know to learn about animals and to respect nature and expand our learning and be outside to learn. Yeah, instead of being inside a lot because some kids can't sit <laughs> low inside. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Uh, well, initially, I mean, the land lab, it's, you know, it's not as easy as you would think. I mean, there's, you know, if you want to put a wetland here, there has to be the correct situation for the wetland. So you have to have the, the uh, right soils, you have to have the right hy hydrology, you have to have the right uh, topography, so all those sort of things. So they had to really kind of plan out where things would go. And then under the guidance of Brent Sodergren, we were able to kind of, you know, fine tune that design. So uh, as we were walking out to the site that the kids thought they were going to be able to do the work on, um, I was talking to Mr. Uh, talking to Mr. Sodergren, and he said that uh, that um, you know this site looks great, everything looks wonderful, um, you know, it's a perfect kind of area for us to do this work on. And uh, I was kind of telling him that, well, we're not there yet; we're about you know, a little bit further on. And he said, well, you own all this land, don't you? And we said, yeah, we do. He said, well, why don't we do all of it? Um, and uh, my response to that was the kids had enough money to probably do about five acres of it. And then he kind of stopped, looked at me and said, I thought it was paying for the whole thing. So by the time we got back out to the center uh, where the kids were at the site, we were able to tell them that we're gonna go back from five acres to about 45 acres and that we had to go back to the drawing board and try to figure out what we wanted to do with 45 acres. So one of the original objectives of the Land Lab was to increase biodiversity. And um, in fact, that was probably the number one objective when this all started. Um, we, we've done that to a very high degree. Um, you know, right now we have over 144 species of birds, different species of birds that we've identified in the Land Lab. Um, and some of them quite rare, some birds that, you know, we haven't, you know, are not common to this part of Ohio or even this part of the country.
Yeah, so the soras are, uh, they're just kind of almost like little chicken-like birds that uh, live in wetlands and, and poke around in the reeds around wetlands. And uh, if I'm patient enough and quiet enough, I could probably get some pictures of them. So I just waited probably 20 minutes and uh, they started creeping out into the mud flat and feeding. Uh, came so close to me, my lens couldn't focus on them because at one point they were just they were too close. So it was pretty neat to kind of see them running around, feeding in there. But uh, didn't mind me being there at all. That's how I was able to get those pretty cool photos. Though. At the land lab, I've I've seen 143 species uh, total on the page. There's been 144 identified. So there's there's one that someone has seen that I have, and I don't know which one it is, but. Uh, yeah, we're up over 140 species just there at the Lane Lab. Um, and so that's kind of a neat thing that we've created something that that is a is a true treasure and has really increased biodiversity. Um, not just birds. I mean, we had we've got mink now in the Land Lab, um, which is a really unique species. Um, and not only unique from the sense that you know they're there, but from the the educational opportunities that come from that, the research opportunities. Uh, you know, we have one of the one of the only pictures. There's been two since 1943 of a mink actually consuming a, a bullfrog um, as a, as a food source, and that's only been documented twice on camera. Um, and we have one of those pictures taken in our land lab. So it's, it's been a unique opportunity um, in, in a lot of different types of animal species. And I bet there was 40 people there planting trees. And it blew my mind, it was, it was whole families. It was parents, it was their kids. And a lot of the parents were still in their business clubs, which just blew my mind. They were out there wanting to help plant those trees, you know, and, and knowing that they didn't have a lot of time. So to have them out there was truly inspiring to me. My name is Patrick Stain. I graduated from Granville High School in 2019, and I had Mr. Redding as my AP Enviro teacher my senior year. Uh, my Take Action project was to install bees into the land lab, and we partnered with a uh, small project at Ohio State, so we have seven hives out there right now. I worked with a small group of students, and uh, mostly led by Chloe Mulford, who uh, helped us install them. And um, really opened my eyes to how important uh, just the smallest aspects of the environment. So we knew from the very beginning when we put the prairies in, if we really wanted to have quality prairies, we were going to have to burn it. Um, and uh, that's kind of interesting because even though there's there's other organizations in Central Ohio that have prairies, not many of them have the luxury of being able to burn them. It's fire. It kind of it does its own thing. Um, but in that controlled environment, we, we hoped to know what it's going to do, but it's not going to turn around on us. Uh, we work from safe areas. The idea of the burn is it, it's, it kind of sets back the invasive species and uh, the prairie plants that have kind of evolved to deal with fire recover much faster from the fire than the invasive plants do. And as a result, you give those a boost and you keep your invasives down. And where we're able to burn, we don't have a problem with the invasive species at all. The burn is, you set the whole land up on fire, and it's a, <laughs> but it cuts, it burns all the top plants, but it saves the roots so the uh, plants can grow faster. Probably the, the most difficult public to convince was my son. I cried when I was three, my first burn, I cried. I mean, the day of the fire, he, he kept looking at me with tears in his eyes, you know, with that doubt, like, why are we doing this, Dad? That's when Brett Sodigren from U.S. Fish and Wildlife He's came over and goes, it's, a, it's okay, it's okay. 
it just helps the plants. It's gonna be fine. Uh, two days later, we had him walking in the prairie in the charred ground, and you could already see the green popping back up through the black. Um, and he was convinced. I mean, he knew that it was important, and he knew that it was something we needed to do. And, and he's now one of the biggest, um, you know, fans of the burns um, that we have. The fact that we are where we are with the Land Lab, I think is a testament to the generation that I teach. Um, and again, on a personal note, you know, I, I've been an environmentalist all my life. I, I've been a pessimist for most of it. Um, the Land Lab has made me an optimist. Um, I believe that we can solve the problems we face, and I believe that it's this generation that will do that. Personally, as a teacher, it is the single greatest educational project I've ever been involved in um, and that, that in and of itself I'm a teacher that's important but I, I think the true importance of the project is something else that I believe very strongly in in the ability of, of this generation to make a difference to make a change um, it, it was not an easy project it continues to not be an easy project um, you know it requires a lot of passion it requires a lot of work it requires a lot of dedication, and it requires the ability to, to fail and come back from that. We planted like 200 trees out there, and it would be really cool because over the years, they're going to grow, and then maybe when my brother or sister is in that grade, they're going to be huge, so that'd be really cool to know that we planted those and that they've worked so well. It's almost like our mark on Granville. Totally. Ha, <laughs>